Hi there, me, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke salter in Crash the Wonderbird is in the background there, screaming his little bird face off. Enough! Enough! Have we not had the sensory sensitivity talk? No, don't talk back to me. So anyways, it's me, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. I said we're going to do a... I said we're going to do a video about comparing your stroke to my stroke. So, I decided to type into the internet, um, the Googleverse, um, comparing stroke outcomes. So, hold on. Hi there, we're back. Um, he's here now. Think you're going to be a good bird? But we'll find out. So, like I said before, I was rudely interrupted by Birdface. Um, so, I said never to compare your stroke to someone else's stroke. So I decided to type into the Google Sphere, the universe, um, comparing stroke outcomes. So, no, I did. And it was what I thought it would be. So let me just preface this by saying I'm not a doctor. I'm not a medical professional in any way. Um, no, I've played one on TV though. You already know that. Um, so I have worked as a rehab and therapy support worker working with acquired and traumatic brain injury clients. I did that for a number of years. Uh, I did that under the direction of an occupational therapist or a um, physiotherapist or a neurologist or a social worker or some, there was a clinical plan and I was there to help with that plan. Be that help someone with their return to work journey, help someone with their return back into public school journey, um, support people in the hospital that needed extra support. So I've, I've helped people in various capacities. And I worked with a young person who got run over by a van while riding a bicycle. And I had to, had to explain it this way to the parents. Your young person had an accident, but the accident that young person had isn't like breaking an arm. Uh, where there's pretty much a predicted outcome schedule of you break your arm today, 12 weeks later, the cast comes off and everything's happy. With a brain injury, be it traumatic, be it acquired, be it due to medical reasons, be it due to an accident, be it due to whatever, there's no definitive predict predictive model of the outcome. So at the end of the video, I'm going to compare three strokes that I'm aware of. And then I'm going to tell you why you should never do that. So let's just talk about some of the studies that have been done. So the first study I found was from the Netherlands. Um, it was a Dutch teaching hospital that had 5,378 patients that were admitted between January 2003 and June 2015. And they looked at the differences between the patients that got accepted between normal working hours and patients that were accepted after your standard work day is done. So, you know, you have your stroke at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on a Tuesday versus you have your stroke at 3 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday kind of thing. And they looked at in-hospital mortality, the seven-day mortality rate, unfavorable functional outcomes, and the discharge to home. So, and that's what they looked at. And they found... The overall outcome of stroke patients admitted to a large Dutch teaching hospital is not influenced by time of admission. So that, that study is relatively recent. It has a fairly large number of patients involved in that study. And they simply determined it doesn't really matter when you get admitted to the hospital. The relatively, the outcome is going to be the same. Now, that's a Dutch teaching hospital, so I'm going to assume... Uh, that that hospital had a working relationship with the university, had all the fancy machinery and some of the best doctors. Probably the only thing that would change that study if you looked at that hospital versus one or two other smaller hospitals that don't have all the resources that a teaching hospital might have. So a Dutch study said, hey, there's no real difference as far as we're concerned. Then I looked at a study out of the States and that study specifically looked at cost. 
that's a thing in the States. I'll include in the description a link down below to a video I did about what my stroke actually cost me, right? I live in Canada. You'd be surprised how much I actually I'm out of pocket about my stroke. In fact, I might do an update video about what I'm out of pocket on my stroke. So this study, and again, the link will be down below. They compared and predicting cost of outcomes versus uh, major and minor strokes. So in 2000, they looked at 230 patients. In 2005, they looked at 250 patients. And they classified all these patients using the Boston Acute Stroke Imaging Scale basis. And they basically looked at two criteria. Did you have a major or did you have a minor stroke? Right? Uh, in both years, uh, and this is pretty self-evident, in both years, patients that had the major stroke, they spent longer in the hospital, they spent longer in ICU, they cost the hospital more, they died more, right? Um, eight patients died in 2000, 26 patients died in 2005, um, and that's patients that had a major stroke, right? Where the difference between a major stroke and a minor stroke, 73% of the patients were discharged to home. So my case, I went to the hospital, and three days later, they let me go home. Um, I was kind of freaked out by that, but that is what it is. Um, 73% 73 73 of the patients that had a minor stroke were discharged to home, where only 12% of the patients that had a major stroke were discharged to home. 61% of the patients with major stroke were discharged to some form of rehabilitation facility or a skilled nursing facility. Uh, patients with major stroke in 2000 cost 4.4 times more than a minor stroke patient. And in 2005, they were three times the cost of a minor stroke patient making up less than one third of all patients, major stroke patients accounted for 60% of the in-hospital cost. Okay. So that study didn't, didn't really concern itself with the outcomes after a stroke. It more concerned itself of, well, what's this cost? Okay. So that study, again, doesn't really compare your stroke to my stroke, my stroke to someone else's stroke, right? Then the last one, uh, it's a study in Turkey. Uh, it's a study of 60 patients. The study was done between 1996 and 1999. It was done from a university hospital in Turkey. And they determined that they took 60 patients, put them in two equal randomized groups. One of those groups, they were given immediate intensive hospital care, hospital treatment, hospital rehabilitation, so you, so they're doing all the rehab, recovery, and initial reintegration exercises in the hospital. So you're getting speech and language, they're getting physio, they're getting occupational, they're getting psychological help in the hospital, but also their families can then get that help as well. They took another group of 30 patients, basically said, hey, you're going home, we're going to give you that as community care based or on an outpatient clinic base. And they determined that and again, this is not a shocker, patients and patients' families that had the in-hospital care, either on a stroke unit or a stroke strep-down unit or in an intensive rehabilitation environment, they had a better potential for an outcome because they had all the resources immediately available to them. They didn't have to take time off of work. They didn't have to worry about scheduling an appointment. They didn't have to, to do things but go down the hall or get in an elevator to go see their physio or do the rehab. And they had the better potentiality of being immediately linked up with a resource because there's some immediacy to being in the hospital versus in my situation, when I got home out of the hospital, um, I had a, about a three week wait, four week wait before I got into rehab. Uh, and I'm not going to say my rehab wasn't excellent because uh, the, the care that I had in the outpatient stroke support I got from the hospital in the city I live in was amazing. So my physiotherapist was great. Uh, my occupational therapist was great. The speech and language pathologist that I saw was great. Difficulty I had was my general practitioner, I had to have a small amount of an argument with him about getting... OHIP to pay for an eye exam because I was concerned about vision changes after my stroke because I was having some vision issues. 
Um, I had to convince my general practitioner uh, several months after my stroke, hey, listen, I want to go to a cardiologist for a heart exam just because of some things that they said were going on because of my stroke. Um, I wasn't immediately aware of some of the community-based resources that I had access to. I had to sort of stumble into it, as you were. So I can agree that the in-hospital care uh, is more effective because it's it's more readily available, right? That's not to say in any way that my after-stroke care, the clinic I went to for rehab, wasn't good, and, and the people that were pra practicing in that weren't excellent because they were amazing, right? So, and then the last one, I'm going to leave a link to the PDF. I'm going to be honest, it's a 47-page document. I have yet to read it, but I'm suspecting I'm going to read it and do a video about it. It's from a hospital here in Ontario, from Western University Hospital. It's a teaching hospital. It's rather world-renowned. And it's a 47-page document about the elements of stroke rehabilitation. So for those of you who want to read the document, it's there. So now let's talk about comparing your stroke to my stroke, my stroke to someone else's stroke. Don't fucking do it. <clears throat> it's that simple. Don't. So... When I worked with brain injury clients, I had a young man who got run over by a car. And I had to explain to the parents on a couple of occasions, no one really knows the outcome that your young person is going to have. No one does. Um, even the experts are going to give you highly educated, highly expensive guesses. Because when you deal with the brain, they're not going to know the exact damage. They're not going to know the exact mechanism mechanism of injury in some cases until they can physically get their hands on the brain however you typically need to be dead for that to happen so with brain injury be it from stroke or accident or what have you you're going to get clusters so some of the clusters are going to be very similar so you're going to get three or four people that have relatively 80 80 95 percent of the same sort of presentation after their event and you're going to get another cluster of two or three people. So you could have the same accident. You could have the same stroke several times over. But there's no guarantee you're going to have the same outcome. So don't ever compare your stroke to my stroke, my stroke to someone else's stroke. Because if you've had a massive hemorrhagic stroke, you might end up spending six months or more in a hospital. I spent three days. I had a mo moderate ischemic stroke. Um, if you've had craniotomies, well, I didn't have a craniotomy, so there's no way there's no way my experience and your experience are very similar, other than the fact that we both had strokes. Um, we may share some of the same difficulties after the stroke, but your stroke experience and my stroke experience are drastically different. Now let's talk about three. I'm going to guess relatively similar strokes. I'm going to talk about my stroke. I'm going to talk about my grandmother's stroke. And I'm going to talk about Luke Perry's stroke. Right? So, Luke Perry and I are relatively the same age. My grandmother, she was 84. My grandmother had a history of TIAs. However, my grandmother had an ischemic, I'm going to assume it was an ischemic stroke, um, from what memory serves. She had an ischemic left brain stroke. I had an ischemic left brain stroke. From the sounds of it, um, Luke Perry also had an ischemic stroke. I'm not sure left brain, right brain, but for the purposes of this conversation, the exact brain side is irrelevant. Luke Perry had a stroke, and he was awake and conscious when the paramedics arrived, and he was dead within a week. Right? I was awake and conscious when the paramedics arrived. I was home in three days. My grandmother had a stroke. I wasn't there when the paramedics arrived, but I'm told she was relatively awake when they got there. She never got out of hospital. She had massive deficits. She could only say three words uh, effectively, yes, no, and shit. Um, she, her and, her and I probably had, like I've said before, the exact same stroke. But her outcome was drastically different. People watched me go down. I had my stroke in my workplace. 150 people got to watch me hit the floor. 
my grandmother had hers alone at home. Um, so when she was found, um, nobody knew how long she'd been down for. So they saw me go down, so they knew when they could or could not give me the TPA. Um, when my grandmother went down, because no one witnessed her go down or no one could give them a reasonable estimate of how long she'd been down, they couldn't give her the TPA. So right there you have three different strokes, three drastically different outcomes. I'm in Canada. My stroke was covered by the Ontario Health Insurance System. I didn't pay to go to hospital. I was never concerned about my credit rating in a hospital. I didn't have to give them my bank card or my American Express or my Visa card um, to just get treatment. No one checked my credit rating when I went into a hospital. You know, I wasn't concerned that you're about to give me a $6,000 drug and fuck, how am I going to pay for that? Luke Perry, he's probably one of the few Americans who would never have to worry about what that stroke could potentially cost him. So the cost of treatment would have been completely irrelevant. So he had the money to pay for whatever treatment he needed. He ended up in one of the best hospitals you could end up in. Unfortunately, he died within a week. And my grandmother, she was, this is going to sound a bit insensitive, and I'm sorry if it comes off that way. She was an old lady who had a history of TIAs, who had a history of high blood pressure, who had some clogged arteries, who was lucky to have survived, but she was not happy in the way her outcome, you, we knew, like we just knew that she wasn't happy existing the way she had to after her stroke, and because it robbed her of so much. So when it comes to comparing your stroke, when it comes to looking at how I present myself after my stroke, to how you present yourself after your stroke, when you look at my deficits after my stroke versus your deficits after your stroke, please don't in, in any way um, attempt to make a comparison. Please don't in any way try to figure out what I did differently than what you did differently. Please don't in any way try to come up with some wily e. Coyote master plan to, to figure out how you're going to get to where I'm at. Because I'm just going to be honest about this. Your stroke killed a part of your brain. A part of your brain that day died. And whatever part of your brain died controlled certain functionality in your body. It will take your brain time. And I'll leave a link in the description down below. Videos I've done about um, stroke rehabilitation, rehabilita rehabilitation timelines and stroke rehabilitation goal setting. Um, in addition to the video I mentioned about cost after stroke. Um, so... Please, don't, don't go comparing me to you, you to someone else, someone else to me, because we all may have had the same stroke, but you're never going to have the same outcome. So, on that note, I'm just going to leave that where that sits. And if you have any comments about this, you want to share some of your own frustrations about your post-stroke journey, please leave them in the, the links down below. If you want to send me a message or there's some content you want to see me generate, please, you can reach me at uh, strokeassaulter at gmail.com. Uh, or if you want to find me on Twitter, my Twitter handle's in the description down below. Uh, or, you know, uh, you can always just leave a comment and we'll have a conversation from there. So if you happen to see or know someone that's going through their own post-stroke journey or someone that's supporting someone going through their uh, post-stroke journey, please point the channel out to them. They might get some, some value out of the content. Uh, they might see something that can help them. Because I've seen a whole bunch of people recently that, they're either the caregiver uh, of someone that's stroke folk or your stroke folk yourself. And it appears that some of you get some good, uh, some value out of the content I've generated. And, and thank you for all the comments you've left and all the support you've given. Um, I appreciate it like you would not believe. 
And if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being someone appears to be immediately befuddled or confused uh, or has lost their sense of balance. Uh, someone who has vision problems, they, they see in grayscale, they can't see out of one eye, they can only move their eyes in a certain direction, they see a little dot in the world. Someone has a facial droop, there's a visual noticeable slackening of the face, facial muscles. Someone who um, can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all. Someone who can't smile equally effectively or at all. Someone who has slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context. Someone who has general body weakness, weakness on one side, or has the inability to stand unaided. Please, immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.